Hello, my dears. It's Katie, and I'm here today to wrap up 2019 and the decade. Wow. Um, it's hard to believe how fast this year went. I literally blinked and it was gone. And that is a wild experience. Probably just because a lot of stuff happened this year. Just probably because a lot happened this year. I graduated law school. I prepped for the bar, took the bar, passed the bar, started a job. That's a lot. <laughs> just a lot of stuff happened. And um, I'm surprised that I survived this year, honestly. Because in some ways it was not a good year. Um, but in a lot of ways it was. And I'm kind of glad that it's over, but at the same time, you know, I want more time. I need a little bit more time, but at the same time, I'm very ready for a new start all of the ways because new decade, new year, just, uh, I've got a lot of things that I need to start over with or recalibrate, I should say. But um, I'm mostly here today to wrap up my reading year. According to Goodreads, I read 87 books. I think that some of the things are wrong, but the way that I'm going to do this is I'm just going to go through and list all of the books that I read this year and tell you just one line of what I thought about it because I've done extensive discussions on all of these books through wrap-ups and tags and just other things throughout the year and if you guys are interested in wrap-ups and things I'll just link my playlist up above for you guys so you can see and I'll also link my reviews playlist up above back when I was actually regularly doing reviews and things um, just so you guys can um, see all of my in-depth thoughts on a lot of the things that I read this year but for now let's just list all the books that I read and tell you whether or not that I actually liked them or if I did not. The first book that I read this year was a carryover actually from 2018 and that is The Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden and I really really enjoyed this book. The next one I read was Peter Pan by Jan Barry. I also really really liked this one. Then I read Shibumi by Trevanion and I really enjoyed this one. Then I read Hook by K.R. Thompson, which I had mixed feelings about, but looking back on it, I liked it more than I thought I did. Then I read The Sea of Monsters by Rick Riordan, and I really, really enjoyed that. Then I read The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden, which ended up being one of my favorite books of the year, and I absolutely loved that one. Then I read The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian, all by Rick Riordan, and I really enjoyed all of them, to varying degrees, but I did enjoy all of them. Then I read um, Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Demigod Files, and I didn't like that one so much. There were... It's a, it's a compilation of short stories and novellas and things, and I just found a lot of them to be severely lacking. Then I read um, The Hope of Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. It was okay, but it was nothing spectacular. Then I read Circe by Madeline Miller, and I thoroughly enjoyed that one. A whole hell of a lot. Uh, I'm surprised that it didn't make it to my favorite books of the year, honestly. But uh, there were just a lot of really great books that I read this year. Then I read Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo. And while I liked it more than Grisha, I didn't like it a lot, and it was just kind of a middle-of-the-road book for me. Then I read Fear, Trump in the White House by Bob Woodward, which I really enjoyed. I don't read a lot of nonfiction, but I did really enjoy that. Then I read Green Rider by Kristen Britton, and I did not like this book at all. It ended up being one of my least favorite books of the year. Then I read The Book Nights by J.G. McKinney, and I didn't like this one very much either. It's odd. It's a very odd book. Um, it had aspects that I did like, but for the most part, I was not a fan. Then I read Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funke, and I thoroughly enjoyed this book. Then I read Nevermore, The Trials of Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend, 
And while I enjoyed it, I didn't enjoy it as much as everyone else seems to. I've read better middle grades, but I still had a really good time with it and it is a really, really lovely story. Then I read Bilbo's Last Song by J.R.R. Tolkien and of course I loved it. Then I read The Gateway by L.J. Andrews and looking back on it, I really enjoyed it, but at the same time, um, I probably won't pick up the rest of the series. It was just kind of a, a strange story and I'm kind of not sure how I'm feeling about it. Then I read The Summer of Katya by Trevanyan and I really liked the story overall. And then the end happened and it made me angry. So it left a bit of a bitter taste in my mouth, but overall I really, really enjoyed the story. Then I read The Land of Silver Apples by Nancy Farmer and while I didn't love it as much as the first book, I still really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to hopefully picking up the third book in the new year. Then I read The Nine Tailors by Dorothy L. Sayers, and unfortunately, I was not a huge fan of it. Then I read The Tears of the Salamander by Peter Dickinson, and, and I absolutely adored that book. I loved it so much, and I really, really wish more people knew about it because it deserves more love than it gets, frankly. Then I read The Light Fantastic by Terry Pratchett, and once again, I wasn't enthralled with it, but I found it more amusing than the first one, probably because I'm starting to get used to his style a little bit more, but um, I'm still struggling to get into Terry Pratchett as much as some other people I know um, who really, really enjoy him. Then I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which I absolutely loved. I was so captivated and enthralled by it and it is was one of my favorite books of the year then I read Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo and surprisingly enough I really enjoyed this one um, I have had a very rough ride with Leigh Bardugo and I pretty much disliked all of her books but Crooked Kingdom is the first one that I can definitively say that I actually liked so that's a win for me. Then I read The Luck in the Shadows by Lynn Flewelling, and I had mixed feelings about this book. This is one of those books where it's like I loved it while I was reading it, but then when I was away from it, I didn't love it as much. Still on the fence about whether or not I want to continue, but uh, overall I did enjoy it. It was an intriguing world. Then I read The Bones of You by Laura Stone, and while I previously loved this book, this time I loved it less, as in I really didn't like it that much. There was a lot of issues that I had with it and whatnot. Um, I didn't document it as such, but in some ways it's probably one of my least favorite books of the year. Then I read The Sea Ain't Mine Alone by C.L. Beaumont, and I loved it. I loved it, I loved it, I loved it, I loved it so much. It's one that I can see myself rereading over and over again and always getting something out of. I just have a lot of love for that book. Then I read Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, which I also thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed, and I cannot wait to pick up Wind Witch at some point in the near future. And then I read Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston, and I read this book three times this year. Once in May, the day it came out, then again in November as a buddy read with Vendi, and then again in December as part of a readathon adventure that I was taking part in. And uh, if y'all don't know that this is my favorite book of the entire year, you're tripping. Like, this is my book. Then I read The Descendant of the Crane by Joan Hay, and I had a trip of a ride with this book. I wasn't so sure how I felt about it at first. Then I got into it a bit more and I really enjoyed it. And then I was just like, I don't know what I'm feeling. So definitely um, one of the more fascinating books that I read this year. And then I read The Red Pyramid by Rick Riordan, which I enjoyed, but it was definitely not my favorite of his books. Then I read A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. Didn't like it. Um, and 
just sitting back and letting it sink in and ruminating over it over the last couple of months, I realized that I liked it a lot less than I initially thought. Um, I didn't despise it and I didn't hate it with the fiery passion that um, Kara did because I buddy read it with her. But I still have some very severe issues with it. Then I read Emma by Jane Austen and I liked it, but I didn't love it. It's definitely not my favorite Jane Austen, but I still had a good time with it. Then I read both The Throne of Fire and The Serpent Shadow by Rick Raridan, and I enjoyed those books a lot more than The Red Pyramid. They're in the same trilogy, um, but the last two were definitely a lot more fun and interesting than the first book. Then I read Heartstopper Volumes 1 and 2 by Alice Oseman, and I love it. I love it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it so much. It's so cute, so pure, so good. Um, and then I read The Tea Dragon Society by Katie O'Neill, and I also loved that a whole lot. Then I reread The BFG by Roald Dahl. Still loved it. Um, I loved it in a different way than I did when I was a kid. I got a lot of other interesting things from it this time and um, just had a great time with it. Then I read Girl at War by Sara Novich, which I also buddy read with Fendi. I did a lot of buddy reading with Fendi this year and um, I don't want to say I loved it because it's not a book that is one that you love or hate. Um, it was a very gut-wrenching story but I thoroughly enjoyed the manner the information was given to us. Then I read The Girl with the Red Balloon by Catherine Mock, and I thoroughly enjoyed this book a whole hell of a lot. Then I read The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman, and I despised this book. Literally despised it. It was terrible. Would not recommend. Please do not. Then I read The World of Tolkien by David Day, and I thoroughly enjoyed that book. I always love learning more about Tolkien and his world. And, and then I read The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon and I also loved that book. It was ended up being one of my favorite books of the year. Got a lot out of it. Definitely plan on rereading it in the future. Also read it with Fendi. And I think that if I didn't read it with Fendi, I wouldn't have loved it as much. I still would have loved it, but not as much. So if you do read it, Definitely read it with a buddy. It You'll just get so much more out of it. I reread Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Also buddy read with Fendi. You guys know I loved it. Just, you know I did. It's still one of my favorite books, one of my favorite series. I only got a lot of extra things out of it this read than I did on my initial read and I actually enjoyed it a lot more than my initial read. So just, yeah, love it. We'll always reread it. Anybody who wants to buddy read it at any point, please hit me up. I will gladly reread it with you whenever, seriously. Then I read Mage's Blood by David Hare. Didn't like it at all. Literally did not at all. Um, there were certain aspects of it that were interesting, but overall I really just did not care. <sighs> then I read Qualify, Compete, and Win by Vera Nazarian, which is from the Atlantis Grail series. <sighs> this series is one that I loved, but I shouldn't have. So that should tell you a lot right there. <laughs> I loved these books, but I don't know why I did, because they are not good. But here we are. And then I read The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, which I also thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. And I read No Flying in the House by Betty Brock, one of my favorite childhood books, and I still loved it just as much as the first time and the many times I read it as a child. Then I read The Door in the Wall by Marguerite D'Angeli, and I enjoyed it, um, but there were some issues that I had with it. Um, so that knocked down my enjoyment a little bit, but overall, I still really enjoyed it. I read The Little Prince by, don't ask me to say his French name, and this was another reread, and I also thoroughly enjoyed it, and I got something new out of it this time, just as much as the others. 
And then I read What's Heaven by Maria Shriver, which I also thoroughly enjoyed, another reread. And then I read Winnie the Pooh's Thanksgiving. Of course, I enjoyed that one as well, also another reread. And then I read A Halloween Night, which is a bunch of like spectacular stories and poems um, that I also loved. I, I have to reread that poem book every single year. Then, of course, I had to read If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, which is one of my favorite childhood books. I, I love that series, but particularly If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. Then I reread Christmas in Camelot by Mary Pope Osborne, which is part of the Magic Treehouse series. Loved it. Will always love it. It will always have a special place in my heart. And yes. Then I read The Twelve Kings of Shedekai by Bradley P. Bolio, and I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I'm not sure, you know, after having let it uh, sink in a little bit that I enjoyed it as much as I initially thought, but I enjoyed it enough that I would consider continuing on to in the series. Then I read The Merry Adventures of Robin Hood, and I enjoyed this one as well. Um, not as much as I remember reading as a kid, but I still really enjoyed it. Then I reread The Star of Kazan by Ava Ibbotson. Loved it. Will always love it. Um, and I just have just such a special connection to that book that I just couldn't help but love it. Here comes one of my surprise books of the year, and that is The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater. I surprisingly loved this book a whole hell of a lot, and I'm so glad I ended up reading it. Then I read An Irish Country Village by Patrick Taylor. And while I still enjoyed it, I didn't like it as much as the first one, and I am thoroughly disappointed by that fact. Then I reread A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which of course I loved. I have a weird soft spot in my heart for Charles Dickens. So, ah, revisiting A Christmas Carol was just lovely. Then I reread Aragon by Christopher Paolini, and while I sort of enjoyed it, my enjoyment was significantly less than I was hoping for, so um, I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. I reread The Christmas Miracle of Jonathan Toomey, which I, of course, thoroughly enjoyed. It's a book I love rereading every single year. And then I reread slash redid the I Spy Christmas riddle puzzle book thingy. And I had just so much fun doing that. And then I read The Enchanted Sonata, which I loved. Like, it should have been in my favorite books of 2019 video because it deserved to be there. But um, definitely loved it a whole hell of a lot. More people should know about it. More people should read it. So get on that. And then I read And I Darken by Kirsten White. And I unfortunately did not love this book, but I didn't hate it either. And that can be attributed to the fact that I read this as part of my college book club. Um, if I didn't read it with them, I probably wouldn't continue on with the series, but I'm intrigued enough and we're probably going to pick the next one in the series as our next pick. Um, that That is one that I didn't hate as much as I could have. Reread Artemis Fowl by Owen Colfer, and I really enjoyed it actually. Um, a lot more than I was expecting to on this reread, and I am definitely going to be continuing on with that series. Then the next book that I reread was The Flower Fairies of the Summer by Cicely Mary Barker. Loved it. Such a cute story. Loved the illustrations. They're absolutely stunning. And then I read Stories from Ireland by Ita Daly, which I also enjoyed quite a bit. I love my fairy tales, folklore, and mythology, and that is literally what that book was. And then I read The Soul of Celtic Spirituality in the Lives of Its Saints by Michael Mitten, and I enjoyed it but it was not a favorite. It was definitely a middle of the road book. A lot of the information in there I knew already, but it was posed in an interesting way that I never really considered. So I kind of enjoyed it for that refreshing look at it. 
And then I read The Night Before Christmas, and of course I love that. I and then I read The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman, and I actually didn't hate it. I loved it the first time, and I liked it less than I did on my initial read, but I'm intrigued enough to maybe consider continuing. And then I read Knights of the Round Table in the, like, abridged, adapted version from my childhood, and I loved revisiting that. I've been in my... Uh, Arthurian legend feelings the last couple days and so I just needed to pick that one up and then the last book that I read even though I technically finished it before Nights at the Round Table was Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett which I loved so much like so so much and I'm so glad that I read that book and um that it came into my life and that I finally got a chance to pick it up because mm, it gave me so much happiness, joy, and peace. And it was a great time. So those are all of the books that I read in 2019. I also read a fair bit of fanfic like I do every year. thing that I continue to enjoy despite the stigma surrounding it. According to my, um, my year in books on Goodreads thingy that I have, um, I read a total of 28,148 pages across 87 books. I didn't include my law textbooks or all of my preparation materials because it would have been a hell of a lot more than that many pages, but you know what? It's fine. Then my shortest book was The Hope of Elantris, which was 25 pages, and the longest book that I read was The Pillars of the Earth, which was 976 pages. The most popular book I read was Aragon, which came in at 1,405,885 people who also read that book. And the least popular book I read, coming in at 12 people who had also read this book, was Stories from Ireland by Eat Daily. And my average rating for 2019, which is definitely skewed, I might add, was 4.1, which is higher than the previous year. But if I accurately put in my proper ratings, it would have probably been closer to 3.8, my guess. But uh, I didn't do that, so it's sitting at a lovely 4.1, which is a lot higher than it should be. So that's where we're at. I read about the same amount of books as I did last year. I think last year I read, what, 85 and a half books, 86 books, something in that range. And this year I only read 87. So I kind of know where I'll just generally fall in any given year. Um, it, of course, it'll depend on the month and depend on the length of the books that I'm reading and the amount of time that I have to read. Um, but I'm hoping that next year I'm able to reach the same goal in some form or another, but I'm going to be a little bit more laid back with my reading next year. Um, so we'll see what ends up happening. But anyway, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this little 2019 recap um, I'd be curious to know if any of you guys read any of these books this year as well, and if you did, what you thought of them, or if you have read them at other times and what you thought about them, or if you're planning on reading them. Just definitely let me know down below. But other than that, you guys know the drill. I have all of my social media links down below in the description. I have a Twitter, which is at a sea of tomes, which is the same as my handle here. And I also have a Goodreads, which is also linked down below. You guys can go follow me see what I'm reading, track my progress, and see my general superficial thoughts on things before I come and scream at you about them over here. But other than that, I will catch you later in another video with you guys again soon, and Happy New Year!